Hey guys, I am Jonathan and I am back again this week for another Friday live stream. As always, I am your friendly and usually responsive community manager. Today, I have a special guest with me, Juan Paulo Mardones, a longtime community member whose creations with Mixer are just quite simply put out of this world. I personally call him a Mixer fanatic. Today, we're going to be learning how to work with Mixer on stylized and realistic art. So, hey, Juan, let's do this, buddy. Hey, Jonathan, thank you very much. Hey, dear community. Uh, yes, I'm a complete fanatic. I, I can say Mixer changed my life when I started using it um, almost a year, a year ago, I think 10 months ago. And, um, well, this is my work. If you check my art station, uh, Pretty much all the things I, I've done are, are created with Mixer. I'm going to check here the Quixel Mixer um, images. And you know me for the terrains, the sur crazy surfaces and all that, the sketches and everything. So today we're going to cover uh, four projects. Uh, I'm going to start with this rock first. And uh, I'm going to show you how to revamp uh, everything with Mixer 2020. Then we're going to go to this uh, Mixer's stylized asset. Then we're going to cover the bug. And finally, we're going to cover the droid. Each of these projects, each one has uh, its own particular uh, challenges and uh, some other problems that uh, I'm going to show you how to work around them. So I'm going to close this and this. Let's go into Mixer. So this is Mixer 2020. And this is a surface that I started using or creating with the Mixer 2019. And well, you you were um, you were limited to this 2D uh, plane that you were using, but now with the new tools, you can use this type of cylinders or spheres. And this is pretty basic, but before that, you had to export your asset or your textures to Marmoset. And since Marmoset is a different application, not everyone has it, but with this, uh, you can really take advantage of Mixer's ability to check this, your simplest uh, textures and how to enhance them. So in this case, I grabbed the 2019 texture, which is completely procedural, and um, the, I'm gonna tell you now what I did. This is the procedural displacement here, and it's created with two layers. So we have a first layer, which is pretty much made with this stack. So if I'm going to turn off all the elements or components of the stack, and I'm going to cover this because surfacing is one of the most powerful things you can do in Mixer. So this is the first thing we created. It's just a noise. And here I'm using a new projection modifier to change the rotation or the position. Then I'm adding a second layer to subtract, in this case, subtract using multiply. To add more detail, I'm using a noise, can you see? And then a gradient remap for that noise. And then I'm projecting it again, blur it, blurring it a bit. But what I'm working here, or what I'm trying to do, because can you see that there's a, there's a cut here, which is pretty ugly, I'm going to mask it, and this is the important thing uh, within Mixer, I pressed M so I can see the plane. I'm going to scatter this, uh, this displacement all over the place. And in order to scatter this, um, I need to create a sort of mask. So a circle, which is a pattern, then a bevel, a blur, a normalize to enhance a bit the height. And then this is where the magic starts with the scatter. And the cool thing about it is that this scatter is completely tileable. So this is my starting point. And as I say, I'm going to clamp it a bit. And this is a trick. If you put the clamp um, to opacity 1, it's going to clamp or cut everything. But if you just need to um, cut the, the top of the rock, you just reduce the opacity. So in this case, this is my first layer that I want to texture with Mixer. Now, regarding Mixer 2020, there's a pretty interesting new uh, component here, which is called the map. And the map is, 
a short name for file. In this case, uh, the map has several modes. You can use custom images, layer maps, which are the layers that you already have on the stack, or a library asset. I'm using the layer map, and in the layer map, I went to the base rock, which is this particular surface. When you load any surface into Mixer, it brings all these textures, the albedo, metalness, roughness, displacement, and everything. So if you're using your textures or you're not using them, you're going to be able to take advantage of the information. So in this case, the map is, I'm using the base rock and I'm using the displacement of this texture to enhance the rock. Can you see? This seems to be sort of stylized and with this I create a bit more breakup. So I'm going to turn on everything and now let's go one by one because this is not that complicated. So this is just a simple surface and as you can see uh, I'm stealing the color. Pretty much I'm not worrying about anything else. I need a color and that's very cool because the, the color and the normal map is providing some information for me. So then I start creating a little of moss using solid, no the solid is not necessary, I'm going to delete it. And the curvature is, is a new curvature. If you open your your old surfaces and, and you used the curvature before, you'll see a curvature here that, that says it's deprecated, updated. So you update the curvature and then you're good to go. So with this uh, curvature plus a, bl a blur and a brightness and contrast, I'm able to start doing interesting things. Now, one interesting thing that I'm going to do now is use just a solid to recolor something. And here I'm using a couple of new things. I'm using the projection again. In this case, I'm using the box projection, which is an exaplanar projection. And it, it works here also in the surfaces. So I'm going to go into my cylinder two and press one. And I'm going to turn it off so you can see. Now the big secret in Mixer is learn how to use the masking or the masking in the stack. So your new best friend people, number nine a number zero. So number nine is the layer mask view. So here is what I have on the layer mask of this particular thing. I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to show you how I created this. So I started with this and again I'm using now the imperfections. Imperfections are library assets that are, um, I'm going to go to my local drive just to show you the imperfections. These imperfections were not connected with Mixer 2019, so if you wanted to use them, you had to download it and load them uh, manually. But now you can bring those imperfections directly into Mixer as library assets. In this case, I'm using the frost and I'm leaving the range as it is. I'm using a projection to change the repetition patterns, again a box projection, and then I'm going to mask it again you see the mask, the blur, and the scatter because I want this sort of texture and I'm masking this texture on top of my rock but this is new, the posterize. The posterize gives you uh, this sort of very simple look which you may achieve with the brightness and contrast but not so much so the posterize really really helps. Can you see how I change the steps and with eight steps I, I get what I want and with a just uh, a little brightness and contrast I get this. So this is the mask of this particular color which is affecting the rock because if I don't do that I have this dull rock which I can contrast uh, by the way but if I want to author my own rock I need to do things that are done by, by me, in this case using only the Quixel Megascans ecosystem. There's no, not a single map uh, created outside here. So then I'm going to add some edges to enhance the readability and now I'm going to go to the vertical moss and here I'm using a very powerful um, modifier which is the normal one. So I'm going to go again to 9 and turn off all my stack. So this is the normal. 
and in the normal I'm using the, this particular solution. In this case I'm projecting from above, but if I project from this side I'm gonna get this mask, which I'm going to bevel, and you see it's pretty much like a blur but not so much, a brightness and contrast, a noise, and this is interesting, this is a good trick that I learned from Eric Dinoware, Sh huge shout out for, to him because he's a master, um, the noise as a distort um, solution on top of anything, I'm gonna turn it off, can you see the sharp edges, and then I'm distorting the edges, and then with a new map on top, which is a layer map from the library asset, the stone, which is multiplied on top, can you see, if you press shift, you can move these two sliders all around, and with this I'm cutting the vertical moss on top of the rock. Okay, so I'm gonna add some cavity moss because I need to enhance those cavity edges to make them more readable, and then a sun moss. And the sun moss is sort of uh, dealing with those uh, corners where the sun should hit, but not completely inside the cavities. And how to do that, I'm going to show you now. So let's go to the mask, stack, and check. Again, when normal, which is pretty, pretty close to the one I showed you before, a bevel, a noise, and a map. But the cool thing about this is that the threshold is not completely inside the rock. So with this very simple solution, you can create a sort of in inverted occlusion uh, and burn only the grass that is uh, outside and not the grass or the moss that is inside. Now there is something else that I tried that it, I discovered yesterday while doing this uh, surface. I was wondering, um, can I put some roots or something uh, else on this uh, surface and mask with the with the displacement. So I added this uh, roots, and I'm going to show you something that may help you in the future. Now I'm going to blur this. Okay, the map. I wanted to mask this particular surface, which is completely done of roots, created of roots in my local library. If I go to the surfaces. Here, this is the one, like the Angkor Wat root, roots, but it has dirt, leaves and everything, and I just wanted the roots. So, since Mixer loads all the files, all the surfaces, and I have access to all the channels, maybe I could steal the displacement and use it as a mask. And this is exactly what we did. So, I'm going to duplicate it just to showcase something, and restore the range of the of the displacement. This is pretty much the range of the displacement, but if I tighten it, I start getting re I start getting rid of some information, and, so, and this helps me to cut the the branches if I want to use them. Of course, I can also change the color in the albedo. I can modify this or I can uh, modify the blending options. If it is normal, if it is a multiply, it's going to be very dark, but this, I'm going to leave it to normal. And this was to just check that you can uh, go to the layer map, and if I open the layer map, these are all my layers, all the layers that I have on the, on the layer stack, and I have access to all of them and their components. So in this case, I'm using the roots, but if I wanted to use something different, um, uh, for for instance, the maybe the the other roots. Now I'm using the other displacement roots, so I'm gonna do that. All right, so with that, we covered pretty much uh, all the benefits of using the new geometries inside Mixer 2020. If you're building a wall, it's going to be way easier for you to use the cubes or the 
cylinders or the spheres without need, having to go um, to Marmoset to do your renders. Of course, if you go to Marmoset, you're going to take advantage of the depth of field and, and everything, but this really helps if you are in a surface mode. But Mixer 2020 is more than surfaces. Um, when I started, the, or I was invited to the beta testing process, which I was incredibly happy and grateful to be invited for that, um, I was thinking all the time about 3D texturing in objects. So we are going to open the next project. So let me open this. Is the wooden wheel two. And the first thing I did, um, exactly as anyone else uh, in, uh, in Mixer 2019, when I started, I created mud. Mud, and it was easy, and, and I loved it. And the first thing I, I did with the, with the Mixer 2020 was uh, loading uh, this particular asset, just to understand how could I resurface it. But the, the resurfacing I did uh, for this stream, I created it yesterday because in the last stream, uh, there was a lot of guys um, asking questions and Tyler and me were answering, but a lot of people were asking about the, what about stylization. So um, let me deal this, let me load this guy quickly. So this is the asset I started with and um, I wanted to resurface it using uh, using its own UVs. So I was wondering if this is scanned and, and someone did the retopo and the projection and the baking, this model should have UVs. And if I press M, I can check that the UVs make, uh, make sense. So what I then uh, achieved was this. I went into the bridge and exported this object to Maya. Maya is my main application for modeling and UVing. So this is the, the asset. And as you can see here, I'm going to go to the UV toolkit, select the shells. And if I start selecting the shells from the asset that Quixel provided, that pretty much works as one plank. This is another one, this is another one, and so on, so, so on, so forth. So if I selected these guys and extracted them, um, I could separate the object and I could create my own ID from a Quixel asset. All right. Let me show you why this is important. Because when I, I started thinking, I'm gonna texture this with a, with a stylized look, I thought, let's use some planks some plank texture, some plank material like this one. This is part of the library also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, source or this uh, surface as a resource for my file, but I'm not going to use it in the mix. I'm going to extract information from it. I'm going to steal information from it. From it. In this case, I wanted the albedo. That's all I wanted. So I started prototyping. I'm going to show you very simple. Just a this was created only with solids, just a base color, and then a mask on top of it. You may wonder how I created this. In reality, it's really simple. It's just a procedural stack. So let me turn everything off, and then explain you why I did what I did. So the original texture is just a layer map which is this, this one, and I went into the source wood, which is the layer that I, that I loaded, and used the albedo. And if I go to the mask, this is the mask that I get from there. So the question is, can I sort of stylize procedurally or non-destructively this texture? So first, a bit of a contrast here in the range. Then, blur it. I did a directional blur. Then posterize it with three levels. Then I did a projection. In this case, uh, it's a box projection. And don't worry about the mess. I'm trying, I'm prototyping something here. And then a position gradient just to cut 
one side and leave it and then a brightness and contrast and if I press 1 I, you can check that this color which is lighter than, than the one below is allowing me to see my wood so then I prototype two more layers to see if this makes sense and then some edge work Wait, I'm going to turn it on for a second and then some relighting but today in the morning someone um, told me that the edges of the wood were not working because it, they had uh, they have these perpendicular lines and, and it was uh, a very useful uh, criticism I could I could uh, use it so I started thinking well I'm gonna need UVs for this so in Maya back again I selected my objects and colorized them so I have these uh, these IDs Okay, so the cylinder, the wheel, all the details, these guys and these guys, I joined them because they are together. And I sent these guys to uh, Marmoset. And in Marmoset, um, let me show you the baker. This is the, what Marmoset received, this object. And in the baker, um, I baked two materials or two textures. One that uh, Quixel didn't have on the model was this particular ambient occlusion, and the other one, this was this. The, the in this case shows albedo, but it's because it's the colors I selected. I don't want uh, Marmoset viewer or Marmoset to render its own colors to the IDs, so I selected the colors myself, and that's why I had to render the albedo. So then what I loaded here and I'm going to show you guys in a second turning off my prototype I started working on the sides and these are the sides but the sides have an, an enhancement the, um, that I used uh, or I created uh, after I received, received the, that critic which was very useful so you, I already showed you that the mask for this um, particular thing sorry let me go back again I'm gonna turn off this guy look at this now the top edge is the one that is bugging right so what I did there was very simple instead of using the map that I used earlier which was the this uh, source wood I thought well maybe I can stylize the same wood that comes from the asset and patch all the corners that are not are not looking great so that's what I did if we go to the to this particular texture and I press how it showed uh, it shows can you see this is the original um, albedo texture of the original Quixel scan and I'm gonna show you if I blur it, posterize it, position gradient it to isolate it and then use a normal to even isolate it more I can patch with this layer the problem that I had below so once I prototyped this I was able to continue doing the same on the rest of the other layers so this one was the same and this is the cool thing about Mixer once you sort of nail uh, a recipe or a combination to do things you can uh, repeat uh, again and again and again and since the workflow is non-destructive you can duplicate your layers move things around and so on and so forth so this is the front which had one of the worst edges ever I think this is one of the edges that the, this person was criticizing so I patched it using the original texture and the wheel was also a problem okay, I'm gonna show you guys the wheel was like this so it make uh, no sense and I patched it using the same 
original texture but the, through the stylization process and remember the stylization is non-destructive and has to do with the contrast blurring and the this uh, for posterize the posterizing thing so this is the rest and the rest is pretty much using the the same original texture and this cylinder is pretty much the same but if you look at this particular object it looks a bit dull it doesn't have any lines or cavity work nothing nothing really cool so I started first with the edge work here a cavity edge and this is just a curvature set to cavities only and the, using the underlying mix and as you can see if I press on and off it's going to draw some lines over here now some dark edges that are on the corners and some light edges in this case I'm using a, a stack that is a bit more complicated it's a curvature brighten and contrast uh, and some posterizing that I forgot to put now I, I, I did it but it still looks uh, a bit flat if I go to the PISA lighting uh, of course this is using a HDR but I want to stylize the, this typical vertical lighting so I'm gonna go back to the overcast and I'm gonna create this relight and show you how I did it in this case this is the interesting thing because remember the ambient occlusion map that I created in uh, Marmoset well I needed something to give this sort of paintedly abstract uh, ambient occlusion dirt or, or self-shadowing here so how it's done it's really simple I loaded the ambient occlusion as a mask here it's inverted the white is going to receive the color and then I simply posterized it with five levels and the color of this is let me see is multiplied on top of the rest so if I reduce the opacity or change the operation the result is going to be different but there's a, a huge difference without the posterization at least for me this may look good but in this case I wanted this faceted look now the next thing is the darken low and this is using one of the position gradients which is new to uh, mixer 2020 and the mixer uh, uses this when when you create the the position gradient I think it usually loads in this no in this I think it loads in this position so if you want a vertical like a Y projection you just move this dot to the center you don't need to be a perfectionist about this but with this mask I'm going to be um, doing something adding a sort of shading to a lower part can you see now the vertical light uses exactly the same method but opposite in this case I'm using a color and I'm overlaying on top of the rest so I'm going to reduce the opacity or increase the opacity and burning a bit more from above and finally this sunburn which is an overlay with a different color but this time using a different mask I'm using a normal because I wanted to burn all this just the vertical or the or the faces that were facing a sort of vertical source light so this is the result uh, it took me maybe one and a half hours to do it plus uh, 30 minutes uh, after the comments I received today uh, and that's a lesson I learned um, really important um, reading all the comments uh, if you post anything on Facebook or wherever read all the comments uh, because you may uh, discover something uh, really cool the person that commented um, didn't tell me the solution he told me the problem but then I was thinking how can I solve this how can I solve this and the solution was in front of me uh, I, I didn't realize the solution yesterday 
uh, I realized the solution today. Why not use the exact same texture of the asset? Okay, so after I exported these guys into Marmoset, let's go to Marmoset, and where is the geometry? Here is the geometry. Um, I'm going to turn off the rocket here, and this is the asset rendered in, in Marmoset. So if you, um, if you set up your UVs, uh, you can uh, you can stylize your own models or you can stylize quixel assets you can take advantage of the of the even uh, of the assets uh, quixel provides checking their own uvs the, their uvs may be good enough for you to to pre-process everything and stylize it now the cool thing about this guy is that if you want to replace this wood with a more stylized one, the one that you painted by hand, it would be a matter of loading that uh, image in the original uh, mask stack, and that would be it. With that, you would you would have the complete result uh, for free, because all the placement is already done. So, with that, we finish uh, this particular project. And Not yet. Not yet. Uh, I have one thing I want to say. What? Tell me. Could I get you to change that background to something a little darker, maybe closer to black? I just want to see how this asset really pops. Let me go to the sky. Or just the, the plane that it's sitting on, perhaps. Oh, yeah, look at that. You're right, man. Why did, didn't you tell me this before? <laughs> well, to be fair, I just wanted to let you finish what you were saying. You know? Oh, yes. But I'm going to say this is absolutely gorgeous and it's incredible what you can do uh, what anybody can do really using the newest version of mixer with these procedural retexturings that you're doing to these scanned assets it's insane yep. uh, this looks like it could almost come out of world of warcraft if you put a little bit more uh large detail into it it would look like a wow prop yeah absolutely you you can you can go to town with the scaling of the textures and, and everything the, the what i wanted to test here was the stylizing process of a, a photoreal um, texture but if if you uh, paint your own you can do whatever you want but it's pretty cool what you can do in two hours with this yeah no kidding man uh you're, you're kind of piquing my curiosity here to see what i can do with this i haven't even considered trying to make stylized assets so it'd be kind of cool to I don't know, try to copy some styles from some other games and see what else we could come up with. Well, it's uh, it's not that hard. Uh, I thought I was... Listen to this. Um, in the beta testing group, uh, Eric Dinover, he created some incredible uh, stylized assets. And when I saw them, I thought, I can't do that because I'm not good at that. But uh, in last stream, as I told you before, some a lot of people were asking, and then I thought maybe for this stream I can try doing something and look at, at the first try, and then with a little feedback, I got this. So really, anyone uh, or anybody can 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 do this. Uh, it's a matter of uh, of doing it uh, very quietly and um, have an objective and the other thing that I also recommend is prototyping in Mixer I started uh, prototyping I, I never start a, a project uh, trying to figure out everything uh, at the same time I create a prototype which is something that I, I can mess um, the prototype give me the, the a sort of uh, a green light to start or, or to uh, believe that I could uh, do this so prototype, prototype, prototype. That's that's my my main recommendation. So any any other uh, question before I move on? Uh, nothing that can't wait for a little bit. Go ahead. Okay, so now we are going to open the bug. So let's open the bug. Ooh, the the space crab. The space crab. Uh -huh. This is the creature. So did you model this thing? I sculpted the the, the model, uh, but I'm gonna show you guys. What is this? It looks like you're missing some files. Wait a second. It happens. 
No, there, in the there meaning, he is. oh, there it goes. No, there he is. I, I just goes. wanted to, I, I just wanted to show you something and, and give also a huge shout out to to Feather Losev. Uh, in Art Station, for you guys, uh, if you don't have time to to model all all your stuff, you may use kit bashing. Kit bashing is not only for hard surface things. So I found this. Um, because I, you know, I, I, when I started using Mixer 2020, I, the only thing I wanted to to create was uh, creatures and characters. Uh, well, among terrains, robots, and everything else. But um, I was wondering if I spend one week if uh, trying to figure out how to sculpt a decent uh, creature, I'm not going to be able to to do anything. So I put a limit of two hours. Uh, downloaded or purchased this and then model the, the character uh, using this kit batch system. Didn't have UVs and did it pretty quickly. Wait, I, I'm gonna open the, the other guy here. Give me a second so I can show you the creature. Alright, so in Marmoset. So, um, the baker and uh, the bug. So this is the, the, the creature and uh, what I used from, from the kit bash was the arms and the legs and some other pieces and I sculpted pretty much the body. Um, and I took uh, not very long time uh, because I wanted to see if I could create the complete uh, creature with texturing in one day. Uh, from, uh, from the kit bash modeling, poli polishing, UVing, uh, texturing, ex exporting and rendering. And uh, I managed to do it, but <laughs> I'm going to show you the thing. The thing is, this has the worst UVs I've done in my life um, because I was in a hurry and, and trying to. I, I think I lost a lot of time trying to f uh, to fix the UVs. I tried to do them by hand. I tried to use uh, Ryzen UV to to automate them, and then in the end, it was like hell. I'm going to do. I'm going to create the UVs in in ZBrush. I'm going to separate this into polygroups. And, and create the UVs in ZBrush. So that's what I did. And the UVs, I'm going to show you the UVs are absolutely nasty. Let's go to Pisa here. And if you press M, look at this. You can laugh at it because look at this. There's so much real estate which is lost. But the cool thing about the, the mixer workflow is that you can mess your UVs or you, you can even mess your model and if you if I were to do the UVs again or even change the, the character uh, replace it with a new one that has two heads or something like I don't know a, a bit more aggressive I just need to go to the setup and replace the model with a new UV set or a model that has more complexity and the system or the or the model is going to inherit all the complete stack so that's what that's that was one of the things I, I was trying to prove. Now the thing is, I got I, I got lost in the in the process. Uh, once I had UVs that could give me the basic um, textures, maybe I can show you the basic textures that I wanted uh, from this guy, which were the curvature, the ambient occlusion and uh, the normals and the, also the thickness this was the main secret um, as a matter of fact this is the main secret of this particular project I was thinking how can I enhance the masking uh, inside a mixer but at the same time how can I use the most information from the model itself and mixer doesn't have uh, baking tools yet uh, you guys are developing a, a sort of baker that works for you but I thought what if I bake the thickness and use the thickness to create compound masks so well I baked uh, the textures that I told you the normal the, the curvature the thickness and the ambient occlusion here's the ambient occlusion and then I went into mixer to see what I could do with it so let me turn this off and turn this on and let's go back into Mixer. 
okay so I'm going to turn off this and I'm going to go here with the recipe I created this uh, bl black base just you guys can see what I'm talking about so in this case look at this this mask is an image it's a custom image and the bake test thickness which is the thickness that I, uh, I baked in inside Marmoset but it has also a curvature on top so this is the uh, the thickness and my my whole idea here was if I have uh, mixers um, custom or mister mixers uh, ramps normal position gradients plus a two or three masks I don't have to paint anything so the the object the objective here was to limit myself I didn't want to paint here I wanted to create this completely procedurally or non-destructively so in this case I loaded the, the thickness and then I'm multiplying the curvature on top and as you can see immediately using and this is very important uh, how the curvature works because um, when people um, uh, load the curvature and this happened to me uh, I was complaining the first week I was using the software I was telling Victor hey the, maybe the, the curvature is not really working well well I didn't know what I was doing <laughs> uh, so I, I'm sorry Victor uh, I didn't really know what I was doing so it, it, <laughs> he told me I'm no, sure he appreciates that yeah no the, the curvature works perfectly so so it's the default curvature uh, which is um, multiplied but this is the thing the curvature has some options if I use the mesh only of course it's going to suck because if, if I go back to to Marmoset and show you the mesh the mesh is not even symmetric when I did the uh, reto auto retopology because I did auto UVs auto retopology auto everything I think I, uh, uh, that was the fastest thing uh, I wanted to go into mixture and, and, and have fun so I didn't want to spend time uh, with the UVs imagine a guy that really uh, create uh, decent UVs okay so if you go to the mesh only of course if you if your mesh is not very good like this one uh, with this option your result is not going to, going to be uh, very good but if you you use the base curvature ma uh, map and the base is this one this best layer it has the albedo metalness roughness displacement and normals what I loaded here was the curvature the occlusion and the normals that was it that's the three maps that uh, were ingested in this file to create the the character so what we have here in the end is a sort of compound mask that you can start uh, working with so if I go back to the mask and you see how uh, you can go into very granular details here not painting anything so I'm gonna add a second one and I'm gonna show a different compound mask here in this case I'm gonna press 9 to show the layer mask and turn off everything okay we start with the thickness again the base thickness but I moved the, the range so I could create this super super high contrast one curvature on top with values that seem to be inverted but the mask is not inverted and then a map and this map let's see what it is ah in this case I'm using the bake test AO so I'm using the ambient occlusion that I baked so remember when you create a map you go to the type of map you want to use you have three types the custom image the layer map and the library asset in this case I created this compound mask with this uh, I'm gonna change the color for you guys to see this is my second compound mask and if you start thinking about these compound masks you can then realize that you can sort of isolate sections of the character without uh, having even IDs uh, I didn't create IDs for this one because I didn't want to paint anything so another one let me show you this one 
which uses again the ambient occlusion and the curvature using the curvature map and I, I can show you if, if I use the mesh only it's gonna suck you see so if I use the base curvature map the curvature really takes advantage of a good normal map so the best uh, if you if you bake your normals and, and the result is good you can rest assured that the results are going to be good uh, afterwards and finally this one which is again the base thickness and a curvature so you can see with using th those two uh, modifiers or mask modifiers I was able to it doesn't this is not the design of the character but the but I was able to isolate uh, parts so now we're going to uh, review how the character is done but why what I was expected to show you guys here was the recipe if you create good maps you're going to have a great time inside mixer so now let's go with this let me show you how it's done I'm gonna turn off everything and I'm gonna tell you something that is really important that, as a suggestion look at my names Ooh, what's that solids <laughs> name your layers name your layers Juan, Juan, what have you learned from the Photoshop days no, I never, I never named anything. So the thing is, I, I started naming things for this stream. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to tell you, but, but uh, if you and 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 that's the lesson because when when I realized I didn't name anything, uh, it's because using the layer map, uh, when I opened the the, the layers um, and the option of the layers, uh, every uh, all the layers I named solid, so I had to sort of. Um, guess what I was doing so in this case I started with the base color and then started with this red and let's go to the mask because the mask is the only thing that matters here if you are good masking you're good at mixing so this is a library asset um, it's the stains this is the this is the mask that I'm using here it's just an image from the imperfections and I'm um, projecting this using the box projection which uh, helps me with the me, with my nasty UVs so I'm masking this red on top of the other thing let me see if I don't have anything else on so a good start then this orange guy what is this orange guy let me press 9 I started with the curvature. Let me show you guys. Started with the curvature to isolate all the protrusions of the character and then added or I did this normal ah I did a mistake here. Can you see I was prototyping. I this was pretty much the the base thickness and then I multiplied the ambient occlusion and then I think I created a bit more stains using the stains and then I projected with this uh, I don't remember the name of this arrow clipping or I, I don't remember do you remember which arrow is that exactly this one that uh, when you yes. press alt yes yeah that's a clipping mask yeah a clipping mask so can you see that I, I if I don't use this image uh, this is pretty much the same uh, thickness but when I start uh, creating a compound mask I'm able to go very very uh, interesting with the, with the objects let me I think I need to reduce my light I oh, know it's good okay so then the yellow and the yellow is using again the curvature the base thickness the window stains in this case may be interesting to use a, a completely different uh, texture this one you know the imperfections are so good uh, I think they are overlooked they are so good to to create anything uh, I I I can use a window stain to create a creature I don't I don't need to use a window stain for a window uh, for a window stain so with this I was able to break up 
Can you see the details here? Break up this um, this particular layer, and then I think I used a different one here, a different uh, equation. Let me see. Nor ah, I use the normal to isolate. If I if I if I turn it off. I'm going to turn off everything. So I start with the curvature. No, I started with an image. The curvature is doing nothing there. And then this image, and then project the image to get more repetitions, and then the normal to isolate some parts. Then the next one. Here I'm going to use a different a different uh, modifier stack that I, I haven't used yet, uh, yet, which is the position gradient. So let me go back. So this is my normal. I'm getting a vertical normal. And with the position gradient multiplied, if I press 8, I'm going to show you the positional gradient. This is a compound mask. And then the images I subtracted using the occlusion the base AO here, and then I start adding some details and, and some stains and the projection of the stains to repeat. And this one looks like this. It's the blue one. I duplicated this guy and I think I stretched a bit the mask. I'm going to show you now. I stretched a bit to create this gradient between the the darker green and the lighter green. And then this guy seems to be subtracting. Look at this. The color is being sub subtracted from the rest using position gradients. And this seems to be a very interesting mask because it's a compound mask. Two position gradients, one subtracting the other one, and the third one and then a curvature which does a difference. I'm going to go... You know, man, the more I look at this thing, the hungrier I'm getting. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. And then I, I painted a bit uh, below the tummy. I'm going to show you the mask. Here, I, I try to isolate the, the lower body of the character without painting. So, as you can see here, I'm going to show you how I did it. Assembling first a position gradient. I'm going to show you the, the, the range is, very, is pretty sharp. And then adding a second position gradient, which is subtracting the first one. So I isolated the center of the character. And then a third position gradient, which is subtracting the top of the character. And finally, a curvature multiplied using the same setting as I, as I showed you earlier. Look, underlying mix, if I go to base curvature, I'm going to get even more or better results. So we have an improvement there. OK, and then the eyes, which are painted. This is the only layer that I painted here, the painted mask. On the eyes, the mask. I created this, uh, it really doesn't make too much sense on this mask, but it, it really is a cool mask. Done with just the AO and a multiplied curvature. Can you see? So if this is uh, like a Lego, um, you are playing with, I don't know, three, four, five pieces. And with those pieces, you can create a lot of things. So I think I think I did something here. I oh, know it's good. It's good. And then some solids and some other solids. And finally <laughs> the last solid, which is just an uh, a curvature. So Jeez, man, this thing looks so good. But if you um, if you take a look at it, it's really simple. Well, I mean that's how you can break down almost everything and that's like a um, recurring theme we're seeing in the comments today that some people are feeling that the presentation of the work is is very complex and 
I would agree with him. The end result is very complex. But when you break these things down into individual components, it's really a lot of small, simple changes and simple adjustments being made that lead up to a very amazing end product. So it's try not to get too discouraged, guys. For those of you who feel like this is very complicated, the end result is I am not going to lie and say that it's not. It definitely is. But it's not because getting there is complicated. It's because Juan has taken his time and built these things up piece by piece. So what looks like it's super complicated is really just him making a couple of simple steps here and there to, you know, get to one giant leap. Yes. And and, and, and again, the, the same exercise as uh, if, if, if your boss or your, your client or, or you, you take or gives you gives you very few little pieces like uh, I don't know three or four pieces you can you can create I don't know uh, how many models can can you create with five or six Lego pieces in this case maybe the model uh, the model seems to be very complex I was thinking about uh, um, giving this model for the community because um, as uh, Victor's model the the wasp it really helps uh, to have a model that works and, and realize that uh, it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with Mixer and, 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 and it's so easy to use. So if people are interested, uh, I can uh, I can give these guys, uh, give the model, uh, maybe to you guys at Quixel. I may create decent UVs first, or I may not <laughs> because that- Hey, hey, whatever works, man. Uh, for those, people who actually were asking, uh, Juan is offering to uh, give out this model. So here's here's what I'll ask you to do, Juan. After this stream, let's go to the art community. And for those of you who don't know where it's at, and you should totally be there, it is facebook.com slash groups slash Quixel Tools group, all one word. Uh, just answer the simple questions to hop in. We'll approve you ASAP. And I'm sure Juan will be absolutely thrilled to post this up for you guys. We'd love to see what you make with it. And one other thing. Could you kindly put that crab on a dark background? Because we had a request for that. Yes, sir. I think I'm not very good with the backgrounds. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at them pop out. That's, that's awesome, man. I'm still telling you, I feel hungry looking at that thing. But <laughs> <laughs> it, it is very cool seeing like just the, the wide amount of different works you can make. I mean, last night I was building uh, a recreation of Hell's Kitchen and Deus Ex, the first one, using like, I was trying to build the the curbs in yeah. New York City, because they have like these street curbs that are plated with steel. And I kind of look at this and I'm like, uh, well, I'm making steel plate curbs and he's over here making masterpieces. I mean, I, I ugh, this is awesome. You, you know, the funny thing is when I posted this on the, on the Slack group uh, with the other guys, Teddy was like, oh, I would love to texture that. <laughs> so I, I gave the model to him and uh, you already you already have the model. I think if I give you the model with the maps, uh, a lot of people may take advantage of it and, uh, and, and learn. And not from my modeling skills, because that, that's not what I'm trying to show here, but uh, about the system, how the system works. And, and also, uh, as may, uh, maybe a lot of people know me, I already created uh, 40 tutorials in the Facebook group. Uh, they are short tutorials or short breakdowns from my crazy experiments. And uh, they range from terrains to surfaces. And I'm going to continue uh, posting things uh, because I love these communities. It's one of the best communities I, I've been. And uh, I'm going to post details. So if you have questions, like ask, ask those questions in, uh, you can ask uh, in the Facebook group what do you want what do you want to learn and i can create a fast tutorials like the ones people some some people ask me how do you do this and then i post a two minute tutorial on how to do it and it seems that it helped a lot of people it's not really produced i don't even edit the tutorials i i create the scene solve the problem and then tape it at once uh, or record it tape it oh that you can tell I'm very old. Um, record it at once, and, and that's it. Well, I, I can't tell. I just assumed that, you know, I'm not, I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't right. comment on ages, okay? I'm, I'm the, as far as I know, I'm the oldest person here, and you can make fun of me for that. <laughs> okay, so, so we have one, project, uh, one more project to go. 
Yeah, yeah. And so you guys know, this is actually, uh, because this is such a uh, special stream, we're going to be going a little longer than we normally would. So today we're going to be running for another 30 minutes. And I'm sure Juan would love to show you this next project. This is going to be the the uh, piece de resistance, huh? The droid. Ah, yes. The uh, the yeah. floating robot with the arms, right? Yeah, the droid, yes. So oh, I can't wait to see that. Let's open the scene. It's called Robot Droid. So I'm loading the, the file now. And this particular project um, was uh, the first project I created in Mixer 2020 once I understood what I was doing. Uh, it was the first model when I saw, when I told Victor, hey, the, the curvature map is uh, not uh, really working. And it was me that was, uh, I was not working very well. Um, so I learned so much uh, with this. Now the problem is that this uh, character I textured in Mixer 2020, but the first beta test on that uh, beta version that I got. So when I tried to open it with the with the public release, it didn't open. So I had to do the the the, the file of the legs again, just to show you guys how it was done. So everyone has uh, only checked the the character in a in this view right so what i want to see if if i unlock the camera the render cam we can go and check the details and i also want to thank victor because he uh on my first render he did a paint over and suggested some really great details and that's the other thing uh which is really good, uh, receiving advice from people you admire. Um, he was in San Francisco. He, I, I don't know how he did it, but he, I guess he did it on his notebook, but he, he did some uh, paint over to suggest me some things, um, these rivets and this white line, and also uh, having a light on the, on, the, on the eyes of the robot. So this was the robot. But the, the, the main uh, thing I want to cover here is the preparation because if I w was going to, if I were, uh, were going to create this model in a UV, 0 to 1 UV space, it was going to be uh, a lot of texture wasted on, on space, so I thought maybe I can work with two pieces because Mixer 2020 currently supports only one texture UV set I modeled this and I designed this character just to be uh, a test for this. So I, I wanted to create the head and I wanted to create the legs in separate uh, in separate uh, mixer files. So let me open Maya and I'm going to show you the model there. The other thing I wanted to test in the in this particular file was a plugin called Quad Remeasure. Many people may know this. It works in, in all the applications, in Blender, in Maya, and it's it's the same that works in, in CityBrush. It's the same technology. So this is the model. Uh, and the, the thing that really matters here um, is, uh, or, or was, I'm, I was not aiming to create a sort of game level um, model. Can you see that the topology is really high? I have 6,600 uh, 6, faces here, and the, the, my questions were like, how the hell do I, can I UV this without screwing up? Uh, and then, how can I take advantage of the mixtures, um, surfaces that uses the, the, the tiling and, and all that? For instance, all these tubes, I UV them as stripes, so I could create some texture with lines and everything like that. So this model or this particular, this part was the first texture UV set or the first, that's it. Look at the UVs. It's inside the UV, zero, zero 01 UV space. So this was going to be my first model. And the second one going is, was going to be this one. Oh, wait a second. I didn't select everything. There you go. All the pieces are here and I unwrapped uh, helping myself with a tool 
called Poly Raven UV, which allowed me to uh, make sure that the texel density was uh, the same all over the place. So, <clears throat> having said that, I exported uh, the models to Mixer, so I'm going to open the legs. Give me a second, the droid legs. I wanted to do the complete model today, but I think it was too much. So in the morning I, I came here and uh, created the, the, the legs again, textured them uh, again for you guys to show. But um, ah, one cool thing while, while the, the file loads. This was my first uh, or my second at attempt. I think it was this. This is what Victor suggests me when, when he saw this. He suggests me a different approach to the, to the sides. And, the, and using uh, the painting for the lines. And that's a cool thing. Once once you start working with Mixer and understanding how it exports files, you can uh, create variations of your of your model. Uh, so this one, uh, and this one was the last. And regarding the legs, it was pretty much the same. I started with, uh, with these legs, um, very chromey. Then I went into this uh, version and I received feedback about the, the orange and I'm very fond of uh, teal and orange uh, coloration. So someone suggested me that the, I think it was Victor, that the legs could be rusty and orange. Then I used the ID map. It's a good I, idea. Yeah. The reason why is because teal and orange is a very sci-fi staple. It's a very uh, common and uh, easily identifiable way to know that it's in a sci-fi setting. Absolutely. So this is the, the model that uh, I created, but I'm going to show you guys. I sort of try to reproduce the, the thing here. So this is the base layer. Uh, this is the model that I textured, um, but uh, since there was no backwards compatibility, I wasn't, I wasn't able to recover it. So I loaded the baked maps and then um, I thought, well, maybe I can uh, take advantage of the library and the smart materials. And there's some pretty clever people at Quixel and a huge shout out to them because they created some smart materials that are completely awesome. I haven't tested all yet, but this metal sci-fi armor, I don't know who did it, but man, it's absolutely great. Uh, and the parkerized steel, I already said it on the on the Slack group, the parkerized steel is absolutely amazing. I'm going to show you in a second uh, what I mean. So let me turn off this. This is a modifier smart material. So the smart material um, starts with the, maybe I, I should start there with the parkerized. This is the parkerized material uh, as it is. Um, people may be afraid of the smart materials because they, they, they are all these, there's all these layers and inside each layer there's all this stack and everything and where are my um, generators for for edges? You don't need uh, generators with this. Uh, once you understand how one ma smart material works, you are able to create your own smart materials. So in this case, uh, this smart material, um, I'm going to change the color of the parkerization, which is this, the base color. I'm going to put it uh, greener, darker, just like that, so the edges are more visible. And that's, there's some edge grunge. You, you should test it. Look at this ferric oxide. Turn it on and off. If you don't like it, you turn it off. And the surface damage, which uses uh, some scratches, and with the placement, you can... I don't know, you, you can't repeat that here. I don't know, here, it was this, the edge grunge. Well, the smart materials are great, so I'm going to go to the one I modified. So the same thing as always, um, creating uh, masks. I'm going to show you in number nine. 
loading the in the base layer the the normals the roughness all the maps I needed I have this color an oil residue that is part of the this sci-fi armor uh, chief green I guess it's based on the master chief so I changed the colors and modified the the smart material to get my my own result uh, pretty quickly trying to put some uh, rust with several levels of rust with this one particularly can you see that the, since the, ah, this is the one thing the character is not uh, in, in a T pose so I was I had to use the I baked it like this so I, I had to use the textures exactly as they were so if I go to the stack and I show you by parts my position gradient is the first then I'm multiplying a curvature and then I think I s I'm starting to break things up with the map in this case I'm using the base layer I'm using the albedo the, the same texture I, I map I, I sort of uh, I rendered for the character I reused it here to break up my my thing and then this one which I like really really much the sink spangle and the projection to make some repetitions and then one position gradient to isolate it a bit more and to create a second layer of rust that goes on top of the other one with a, with a color that is more vivid um, this is the layer layer stack it's longer but it's can you see it's pretty using pretty much using the same thing position gradient curvature this map which is again the base layer albedo, again the sink spangle, a projection, the ambient occlusion, and on top of it a curvature. Using in this case the underlying mix, I'm going to show you why. If I use the base curvature, it's very tight. But if if I use the mesh, let's see how it looks. That that looks good. I can keep it, so I can get those uh, orange things over there, and a third layer of rusted metal. So in this case I didn't have an ID, uh, I didn't have the time to bake it, but on the first one I, I really baked it. And finally the sort of uh, occlusion solid or something like that. Um, and I think I was able to recover some paint uh, from the model, let me see. Yes, this is one cool thing that uh, you can do. Um, stamp things um, uh, on the model. Many people ask why I can't uh, create the the same as uh, the suite and I, I'm not a suite user um, I, I, I saw incredible results with it but uh, I never w was able to, to use it but I think this is pretty much the same because if, if we look at the of the normal map when I'm st stamping height which I'm not using I'm going to turn it off. Uh, I'm stamping the normal. So in the end, uh, if you're able to draw in black and white uh, a displacement, then uh, that is going to be baked into your normals. So so this this is a pretty pretty good result and, and a pretty um, good replace and replacement for for the suite, and it's real time. Oh yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. And to echo in as somebody who worked with the suite extensively and still uses it on occasion, but uses Mixer for everything else, let me tell you straight up that being able to paint in real time and have that normal data get calculated into the real time curvature map and object space and everything else is nothing short of phenomenal. Absolutely. The, it's so fluid. And it's only going to get better as more updates come out. It, it, this is just the tip of the iceberg, guys. Like, this is the bare minimum of what Mixer is going to be. And if that's the standard that we're going to be working from, the future is very bright. Um, yeah, and for those of you... Oh, I didn't mean to cut you off, Juan, but I did want to mention, mm -hmm. for those of you who do come from a sweet background like myself, I do plan to at least write a couple of tutorials on this subject that are pretty basic and should cover most questions that you guys have. And I will probably post them in the art community as well as on ArtStation for you guys. Um, I know it's the suite was one of our flagship products that in, in the past, and we don't want you guys to feel left behind. So we're going to definitely find a way to help you guys get up to speed. 
for those of you who are you know struggling or just curious how it works there's just so much coming and you guys it's like this is the best time to be a 3d artist absolutely <laughs> yeah you're right um you know something that i learned um because i want to cover some uh, some uh, recommendation as as we as we finish um is working in 2k uh i all the models i created before the stream i was working with 4k and my, my computer is pretty powerful but if you're working for in 2k and your paint layers are 4k you you can work at the speed of thought uh in now what i just did while while you were um talking i loaded the 4k uh textures and look at this because maybe the people were not able to see the the result um this is the result in 4k and if i load the 8k well i guess it's going to be experimentally expensive but um i was able to export this and uh send it to Marmoset in the morning before the stream and uh, here I have it um, I'm gonna drag it there so this was the result uh, of the of the, uh, those textures that I created in the morning so the cool thing is once you have the stack which is non-destructive you can save a lot of versions uh, or export a lot of versions and you can uh, go to town uh, creating uh, Compli uh, complicated art. In this case, the two parts uh, are important. Um, as I understand, Mixer will have multiple texture sets in in, in the next evolution. Uh, but for now, uh, if you if you really want to preserve the 4K texture, do it in parts and and, and separate those parts in in something that is meaningful. In this case, I went with the with the head and the and the legs. And I guess someone is going to ask, can you put uh, a darker background? So I'm going to do yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. Where is it? Where is the light? Uh, where is the light? Sky, sky. I can't find it. I, where is it? Where is it? It's not this one. I have two lights. Oh, Try my. clicking on the background. Hmm. Where did you put it? I don't know. I only have. I think I have a. All right. Let me see. I can rotate the light. Well, while you're uh, figuring that out, uh, I, I just hope that you guys have enjoyed our first long form stream that we've done in quite a while. Uh, we're still kind of figuring out what we're going to be doing, but for now, I think uh, this has been a phenomenal stream. One like you've knocked this one out of the park, and found it. The Oh, that looks amazing. Look at that. <laughs> Dark backgrounds really make these slightly light objects really just pop right off the screen. Yeah, uh, I know. But um, usually I try to avoid them uh, because of uh, um, it's a practice that uh, everything looks great in black. But once you light it, uh, especially in white, it really sucks. And as a matter of fact, mm. I'm, I'm going to do it. Uh, uh, the 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 white is eating up the the space, so that that's why the the color should be darker. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is it. Um, um, I would like to uh, review my list because there's some uh, recommendations uh, that I wrote. Uh, yeah, go for um, it. Okay, about UVs. Um, prototype with sim simple things and think what are you going to be texturing. Uh, within Mixer, are you going to be using projections inside Mixer, or are you going to be be using tiling? Um, nothing stops uh, stops you from improvising. Like like all the things that I showed you here were improvised. But if you're working on a production and you need to plan ahead, uh, you are going to get uh, better results if you plan a bit more. Um, in this case, uh, with this particular model, the only thing I really planned. Uh, was the UVs because uh, um, I really wanted to take advantage of the 4K resolution. But uh, keep in mind that uh, since you can mask in, in, in Mixer, you may use the hexaplanar or pr box projection or the tiling. Um, so, so 
bear in mind that you should be very wary of how are you going to UV and uh, hopefully you can uh, make better use uh, of the UV space than the, than the one I used for the for the crab or the red uh, creature because that really sucked uh, now and the cool thing is that if I replace the model with a with a better UV one I don't have to do anything but replace the eyes that that will be the only thing I, I need to do now regarding the the mixer um, one thing that is really important um, is uh, this the setup tab and and this thing is um, because size matters uh, usually if you import a model it, it may land here in the size and meters this guy should be maybe 10 or 13 or, or very big and the first thing that will happen is that you will lose the shallows so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do it I hope I don't crash so mixer is going to make the the model bigger but also whatever projection it's done it's going to be affected with this so the first thing you should do once you load a, a mesh is work within the visible grid so scale it down to one to three to two and you you're going to be able to see the model uh, ah, I mean, look at this the shadows are still uh, visible but if the model is very big the shadows will not be visible there there, there will they will be clipped so I'm gonna reduce this to 4 sorry to 2k and that's the problem can you see I'm not getting a, a fast response because I'm killing the graphics card um, you should work uh, in 2k and then export this is this is uh, one of the things that I'm proud of you can thank me this window <laughs> I was the one that uh, suggested it, uh, this thing that they, they leave the paint lay, uh, the paint layers intact so you can uh, work um, in 2k and paint in 4k so keep the, the size is really important it, de it definitely is um, uh, to kind of clarify what you did there too as you mentioned when you guys do change the size of your object it does change how mixer relates to it so when you increase the scale or you decrease the scale it adjusts Pretty much everything about it including the uh, all the way the masks apply the way the textures apply to it so if you're trying to keep textures in a certain setup it's a good idea to make things scaled to the way you think they should be so if it's supposed to be two meters by two meters try to keep it around that two meter object mark just you know for realism's sake and to make it easier for editing so you know exactly which slider is going to apply to what all that kind of fun stuff um, we have five minutes left, guys. So yes. I wanted to see if we can just go ahead and open up the floor to any additional questions. Uh, I know there's a small stream delay, so by the time you guys hit, hear this, it's actually going to be four minutes and 30 seconds, but that's okay. Uh, feel free to ask questions. We'll answer what we can, and I will rel relay anything to Juan that I can. Otherwise, I will answer them myself. But while we wait for the stream to catch up, Juan, uh, again, like I wanted to say, this is just fantastic work. Like You, you were such a good artist, and it's it's great to not just look at you as a friend, but also as a colleague in a sense, because that's how I view this community. It's not that I work at Quixel, therefore I am like a different person. I'm just somebody that makes art and works with artists for a living. And I look at you guys as colleagues because we're all doing the same thing. We're trying to improve ourselves and make art and to see you spend so much of your time trying to help other people. It's really commendable. It makes you, in my view, a very good person. Thank you. And I'm, I'm... This is, you know, something. Before I started uh, in the Facebook group, uh, I have I, I didn't post anything. Uh, I didn't help any anyone, uh, <laughs> and uh, I discovered this community that is so great. Uh, and I I've learned, and I I, I have received so much that I I, I feel um, really in the need of uh, sharing all everything, sharing all all the discoveries all the knowledge and I'm going to continue uh, creating uh, um, innovative uses of the quick uh, the Quixel environment uh, system that's that's all we can really ask for that you're willing to spend so much of your free time to help other people um, it's yeah I mean everybody really appreciates it not just us at Quixel but the the community too we can see it in the way people respond to you and, and um, I, I just hope that you can continue doing what you've been doing, which is helping so many just to get up to speed and, and, you know, just being a friendly, nice person. 
that, that really goes a long way just in and of itself. Thank you. If, if I'm breathing, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit. Uh, let's see here. Um, we have some questions regarding what Mixer can and cannot do. So Oliver wants to know, is there any update for character creation in Mixer? Well, you can use, as uh, Juan shows you here, there's a character right there. Uh, you can use pretty much anything on anything you want. Yes. The only limitation really is your imagination. Yes. Um, there's a lot of uh, tools that are in development uh, on the on the roadmap to improve uh, Mixer, but uh, I'm going to continue uh, working especially on the things that people feel that uh, they need to see. That's why I, I created characters for the beta. Um, mm. So if people want uh, to see characters, then I'm going to continue with characters. But also I'm going to go with terrains because I'm, I'm also a beta tester for Gaia. So, so I'm going to mix the two, uh, mm -hmm. create Gaia terrains and, and show how you can texture 3D terrains in a Mixer uh, soon. So that's nice. Going. So what else? What else can we do for you guys? Uh, Crimson Wolf wants to know if we can get some tutorials focusing more on the Endu portion of Mixer. Will Mixer get the shift click line creation like Endu had? Well, to clear that up, that was actually really a Photoshop option uh, because Endu at its core was nothing more than really a Photoshop plugin, a very advanced one that did a lot of amazing work, but still very much a Photoshop plugin. Uh, I I'm, would be very surprised if Mixer did not get shift click back at some point in the future uh, again this is the first iteration of 3d painting and mixer so it's going to be a little rough around the edges but this is the baseline from which we're going to work going forward which then means that any improvements we wake or it's just gravy it's going to make everything so much better so don't be surprised if well actually according to teddy it's already there so yeah uh i Jonathan, must have missed it <laughs> Jonathan, look at this white Woo! line look at this white line victor's white line yes that's done oh, with wait, the, with the you gave that to Victor, and he, and he did no, that. No, no, right? no, no. I painted it, but Victor, uh, Victor told me put a white line. Oh, I so, see. I so, see. So I did it, and I used the exact same thing that you're talking about. Uh, forgive me, I'm a little tired today. I've had a very long day. Yes. Uh, that being said, uh, we are pretty much wrapping it up now. We have about a minute left. Um, Crimson Wolf, regarding Endu, as I mentioned earlier in the stream, I am very much looking forward to writing some in-depth tutorials on how to go into Mixer coming from a background in the Quixel suite. So if you're used to working with Photoshop, if you're working working with other, you know, raster or vector-based illustration programs, I can help you get to the point where loading that up in the Mixer should be pretty easy work. And with the way Mixer is structured right now, it is so easy to take existing textures, height maps, anything that you have and kit bash them together. Uh, when you were talking about kit bashing, Juan, you can also do that in 2D, uh, taking existing height maps and your like editing software of choice, bashing those together to make completely new maps. You can take different types of screws, push them together, edit them, cut them away. You can take panels, you can take doors. There's so many different things you can do that you can then load in the mixer on a UV map and just create something entirely new and different from it. You, you can even design in mixer. You can even mix, you look, mixer is so incredibly powerful. Uh, man, I'm a fanatic. Yeah, you know. Let <laughs> if you if we have thirty seconds to load this, check this out. This is this was not planned, but uh, uh, I hope it's going to show the model. This is a alpha procedural based. Uh, let me turn on the displacement. I'm I'm working on a on a vehicle, and and uh, let me show you with the lights. This is alpha procedural based. So the alphas are repeated uh, in, the, in the UVs of this uh, cylinder, which is completely flat. Uh, it's like this. This is, let me show you, this is the model. This is the model. There's nothing there. Sorry. There. Just a cylinder, huh? Just this, with, with a lot of subdivisions. Wow. And then um, I want to create this uh, completely inside Mixer. The, the tire and then the rest uh, but it has it, it, its holes and some procedural masking so it's not uh, you don't have to be extremely fanatic uh, and maybe create everything procedural maybe you can model one of these uh, sort of uh, objects um, grab dock in, in ZBrush tile it here 
then do something else and then add some imperfections on surfaces so this is absolutely going to, this is going to be one of the next projects that i will showcase in the well, i know we're all looking forward to seeing it this is incredible work uh, speaking as somebody who's had to make tires in Photoshop and trying to count and do the math <laughs> to make it work on a radial texture, uh, let me just say I'm looking forward to never doing that again and seeing the results in real time in Mixer. Uh, that being said, guys, we are at the end of the stream. Juan, thank you so much for being here with us. You are an amazing person. The work you make is incredible and very, very much awe-inspiring, not only to me, to all of us here at Quixel and our community. You are, I would say, one of the pillars behind everything we do. And it is very nice to have you on board with us and taking the time to show off what you've done and help other people. And I hope you can continue doing that because it seems like you really appreciate it. I love it. So, thank, thank you very much. Anytime, my friend. That being said, guys, um, as always, it's a pleasure to have you here. We will be back as soon as we can. I can't guarantee a time, but we are always working on more tutorials, more live streams, and more interactions with you. That being said, it's the end of the stream today. But please come visit us on Facebook at Quixel, or sorry, facebook.com slash groups slash Quixel Tools Group. And we are always there ready to chat or just show off your work. We'd love to look at it. Um, thanks again, guys. And we will see you again next time.